widespread damage after one of the largest earthquakes hit New Zealand this week. Well, with New Zealand, we put the area on alert first three days before the earthquake. And it was predicted by this New Mexico man working out of his RV. Davidson tweeted a warning four days before a quake hit Japan and one day before another hit Chile. Davidson says he's predicted eight of the last ten earthquakes across the globe, including the last four large quakes. He talked to us today about how he does it. The sun tells you when the earth is most likely to have a big earthquake. Then you can look at where Earth's energy is flowing, both above the ground and far beneath the ground. If you look inside the RV, you can see it's just a regular living space. Which is why Davidson says this is something everyone can do from the comfort of their own living room. The tools that people use, that I use to do this, are publicly available. Since the sun is a key factor in predicting the next big one, Davidson says New Mexico is the best place for his line of work. Good morning, folks. That was Sandra Ramirez of KOAT7, the ABC affiliate in Albuquerque. Indeed, the last four magnitude 6 and higher earthquakes had their locations put on alert one to three days in advance, and eight of the last ten. Wouldn't make a claim like that if I couldn't prove it, so over at QuakeWatch.net, if you find the line near the top, it says, Click here, regular updates. You can verify the stats and see them going all the way back to when we started forecasting last year. Suspicious? Do your homework. Anyway, folks, we had a sun diving comet cut in yesterday. It entered the sun last night. Goodbye, little guy. It'll be relevant as we come to spaceweathernews.com and find a nearly quiet sphere as far as we can see. But I say nearly because overnight interruption did occur just behind the limb, just as the comet entered the sun. Did you catch the coronal ripple of plasma ejecting? It's not coming at Earth, but has excellent CME coupling potential in two to three days. When leading up to that, the massive northern coronal hole will begin to face Earth. We should get another big quake before the end of the weekend. What we likely won't get, however, is solar flares. Nothing doing, even with sunspots visible. The bigger group on the right still lacks any real complexity as the magnetism of its umbra are nicely divided. Solar wind continues its calming trend as Earth still totters on the edge of a cosmic ray health warning with the KP index being so low. The top quake of the last day was a 5.7 and directly in our alert zone. Had it been a 6-pointer, that would have made 5 in a row, but alas, it's simply noteworthy that the biggest quake of the day did hit the alert zone, and even though it's not magnitude 6, the USGS does say it's significant. That's why it's in red. For those who ask why we took Japan off the alert map yesterday, they had a volcano eruption just north in Kamchatka, took away a lot of the stress nearby. Okay, folks, one of our channel favorites, David Hathaway, has co-authored a new paper predicting a similar solar cycle strength for the next cycle to the current one, or perhaps even slightly weaker. We can't expect to hear mainstream say a maunder grand minimum period is coming for the sun, but this is a good indicator of how weak the sun's magnetic fields are right now, and it's an excellent read. Another excellent paper is out quantifying how much water is actually at the poles of mercury in ice form. Of course, the bigger water news in space is the subsurface ocean on Pluto. Website members will remember this possibility was raised in 2013 in our Star Water series. But we also have other news out about Pluto. It apparently underwent a pole shift, not a magnetic one, a geographic one. Apparently the entire planet tilted, and although an impactor may have played a role, they also say runaway nitrogen buildup could have caused its tilt and tip. Quickly going round, we had another tornado rip through a disaster zone. First Italy, now New Zealand. So much rain has fallen in the Dominican Republic that most of the country is under a state of emergency. Technological disaster declared due to the damage. While it's hot in the U.S., it's been cold across the waters as snow and cold records have fallen as La Nina cuts at the eastern world. But now... It appears it's the West's turn. The first major winter storm is developing today, and wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour are possible along the convergence zone. Little preview of the next few months. If you didn't catch our New Zealand Earthquake Lights episode of Deeper Look, please do so. We'll do the rest of the world's weather in just a moment with pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.